Hey, what's up guys? As you know, mining profits are in the dump right now. It's very unfortunate. And in this video, I'm gonna be doing everything I can to avoid turning off my GPU mining rigs. I'm gonna be showing you guys how to actually check if your farm is profitable or not, because you can't trust the hash rate and O numbers. Based on that, I'm making $3 a day, but realistically, I'm either losing a quarter a day or breaking even. So I'll show you how to do that. And then we'll discuss with my farm all the changes I'm gonna potentially do to make sure that I don't have to turn this off unless the market gets way worse and then there's not too much you can do. But let's get into it. All right, guys, so I mentioned that you can't trust the hash rate NO numbers, especially when profits are this close to break even or negative. You really wanna actually dial it into your specific farm. And I found a little trick to do this that's much easier than a lot of methods I've seen other people using. So let's take a look at what I mean. This is the general way that I used to look up my profitability just using the GPU calculator, putting in all of my cards, my two 3080s, 3070, 3060, 2070 Super. So GPU calculator, I've got all my GPUs in here. 11 cents, we'll hit calculate. And by this, it's saying that I should be making 79 cents profit every day and that Nexa is the most profitable coin. So, okay, that's cool, but this isn't correct. A lot of people already know that those numbers aren't accurate. So what a lot of people do is they go into calculator here and they input their exact hash rate for different coins. So if I wanted to put in my exact Dynex hash rate and wattage, I would just put it into this calculator and hit calculate. But the issue is you have to redo this every time. You can't save this with those values in. Uh, or if you can, it's kind of annoying to do. So take a look at this method instead. If you go into account over here and set up an account, that way it's gonna save all this stuff to your actual login. And then you wanna go to custom hash rate right here. And how I've done this is I've picked a GPU that I don't own and I've basically set my hash rate for that GPU. So basically I'm setting custom numbers for that GPU and I'm putting my entire farm hash and wattage for different coins attached to that single GPU. Now this is kind of annoying because you need to test your farm on a bunch of algorithms, but once you do it once, you don't really need to do it again unless you make farm changes, which I'm about to do. So unfortunately I'm gonna to have to do this again, but you can see I've got my Dynex hash rate in here. I've got my Carlson hash, my Nexa hash, my Pyron hash, and it's all under this A5000 GPU. So I've saved all these values. And what that allows me to do then is if I go back into GPU calculator, you'll notice that the A5000 has a little wrench next to it. And that means that it's using custom hash rate values. So instead of manually setting everything, now you just click on this set your power and hit calculate. And this is gonna give you your actual farm profitability numbers based on your real wattage and your real hash rate. So you can see Nexa with my hash rate on my cards. Where are you Nexa? I'm losing 55 cents a day if I mine Nexa right now. So that's way off from the standard GPU calculator. Some coins are more accurate than others on the standard GPU calculator, but still check all your numbers. So that's why I'm mining Dynex right now. It's basically the last coin where I'm profitable. But unfortunately, it gets even worse than this because this hash rate NO is saying that I should be making 14 and a half Dynex per day. But if we go to the Dynex pool and look at my rewards for the past few days, I'm not getting to that 14.5 Dynex. I'm getting yesterday 13 Dynex and the day before 12.4 Dynex. So taking into account that I'm not getting all the Dynex I should be getting based on the estimates, I'm basically essentially totally breaking even right now. And that's why later in this video, I'm gonna discuss some additional changes that I need to make to squeeze out some additional profitability. But before I get to that, I wanna try to figure out why are my pool rewards never matching up with hash rate NO. I understand that there's luck involved. It depends on how many blocks the pools finds. Some days you're gonna be worse than others. But if that was the case, then eventually every once in a while you would expect to make more than the estimates one day. 
and consistently over the past three months, really no matter the pool or no matter the coin, I'm making at least 10 to 20% less coin than I should be based on my hash rate calculations on hash rate NO. Let me know if you guys have an idea of why this is. I mean, is hash rate NO just wrong or is it the pool fee, the wallet fee? I mean, there's a lot of things that go into this, but just one day I would expect for it to be above the estimate or equal to the estimate and that almost never happens. Another thing I had thought of is when I was dual mining Zilliqa, that's one minute every hour that I'm not mining the main coin and I wondered, does that account for why I'm not making as much of my main coin as I should? But I did the math and 24 minutes a day in a 24 hour day is less than 2% of mining time. So at worst case, when you're mining Zilliqa, it should only be taking 2% away from your main coin revenue basically. And you add in 1% for the miner, 1% for the pool, that's like 4%. Where is the other 10% going unless hash rate NO is just wrong? So let me know your guys' thoughts on this. There is one thing I'm gonna test in this video real quick is I'm gonna test the ping on a couple different pools and see if maybe Hero Miners is just not the pool for me, kind of on the eastern coast of the US, I'm in Kentucky. So I'm gonna ping a couple pools, maybe that can shed some light on what's going on here. Um, but I'll show you guys really quickly how to use that ping tool. Okay, so you wanna go to GitHub and get this two minor stratum ping tool. We're gonna get the Windows version and we're gonna go into our downloads and unzip this. And then we're looking for this ping ether mine and we'll edit that and you can see this is basically the command right here so we want to replace this pool with the pool that we want to check so we put this down here and let's go to mining pool stats and check out dynex and just ping a couple of these pools and see maybe i'm using the wrong gateway on hero miners i'm using the east one but maybe the west one's closer to me so let's check a few. We'll check mine now space, hero miners and neuro pool. And then why not? We'll do K1 pool too. So getting started is generally where you want to go on these pools. Um, so let's see right here is the US East one. Let's just paste that in here and save it. Control S and then we'll let me pull my downloads back up then we will run this so all right that pool is pretty quick actually 40 okay let's see average 42 so this is the number you want to look at so let's check hero miners now run it again okay well already i know i could be getting better ping if I use the top pool instead of hero miner. So this one's at 49. Okay. And then let's check the West one just to compare. And there's also a North America South. I don't know if that one's new. I've never noticed that one. So we'll try that one too. Okay. West is definitely not the one that's 107 ping. Let's try South. Sorry. I know it's a lot of windows popping up here and there. South is 62. Okay, so east is at least the best for hero miners. We do know that. What is this one? K1 pool. Wow, so K1 pool. The US one is really bad. 200. That's interesting because I've used K1 pool for other coins and I'm wondering if it's that bad on the other ones as well. So, okay, was that all of them? We did, we did, we didn't do Neuropool yet, did we? All right, so I think I need to attach one of these ports onto it. So Dynex dot dot, let's just do 19331. Is that gonna work? Oh shit, 35. So Neuropool appears to be by far the best one for me. I think, let's see. Mine now space was 42, Hero Miners was like 50, 
Neuropool is the best, and it looks like its fee is 0.1% compared to here miners 0.9%, so not any difference there. But I'm going to try that. I'm going to switch to Neuropool for a few days and see if I see any improvement. So as I've mentioned before, mining at break even is not technically the worst thing ever, especially when you're paying for power out of pocket. That's because I basically just look at it as if I'm spending $8 in electricity, it's the same thing as if I was taking $8 out of my check from work and buying $8 worth of crypto. So breaking even while mining is not the worst thing, but you definitely don't want to be going negative while mining because then you might as well just be buying and you'll be getting more crypto for the exact same cost. And you don't have to deal with all the extra heat during summer. So for my farm, I have a couple ideas on what I can do to keep this running as long as possible. You'll notice I've got a GPU missing here. Well, I put my 3080 back in my editing PC for a few reasons. The first being that the 2070 Super was turned out to be a little laggy during editing and it was kind of pissing me off. So that was one reason. The second reason is that these 3080s, and I'll pop up the numbers on screen, are a lot less efficient on Dynex than the 3060 Ti's and the 3070s. And with that, less efficiency means it's basically dragging down the efficiency of my whole farm and maybe making it where I would be at break even, but with the 3080s running, maybe I'm losing a quarter a day. So in times like these, efficiency is king and those 3080s are not great on Dynex. So depending on what happens in this video, I may end up just unplugging this one and not actually running it right now to save power and only run my 3060 Ti's and my 3070s. The next idea that I'm potentially gonna do if things get real bad is turn off my 3060 Ti Hynix rig. I'll pop this up on screen as well, but the Hynix cards in general are using about 10 more watts per card than my Samsung cards. And on a, what is that, nine card rig, that's an extra 90 watts that's really hurting my profitability numbers. So worst case, I'll turn this one off and only run my Samsung cards minus the 3080, and all these are Samsung cards as well. And my last option, this is basically my last thing that I would be able to do before turning off would be to, instead of be running three rigs, maybe combine all these cards into two rigs. I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but that 2070 Super I ended up selling because it's not efficient and I got $170 for it, bought it for 120. So might as well get rid of that and pocket the $50 cash. But that leaves me with 24 GPUs down here, and this motherboard can hold 11, and this motherboard can hold 11. So if I wanted to, I could have two 11 card rigs and eliminate all the overhead from the motherboard, the RAM, the CPU on this rig, and only be running two rigs. The only problem is these motherboards only hold 11 cards each. So that only works for 22 GPUs, and I've got 24 down here. So what I'm thinking of doing is maybe selling two GPUs and getting my number down to 22 so that I can fit all these cards on two rigs. And which cards would I sell? I would probably sell the 3080 that I literally just bought and I have one 3060. And if I sell those two cards, then I have all 3060 Ti's and all 3070's, which are efficient on almost every algorithm and that's why I buy those cards because they're great bang for your buck in terms of how much hash you get for the low price and they're still very efficient. They hold their own even to this day. So what I'll probably do is list those cards on Facebook Marketplace, but I will make sure that I set the price where I'm gonna make a profit on them. So I bought that 3080 for 430. I'll probably list it for 500. If it sells, great. If it doesn't, profits will probably bounce back in a month or two and I still have that card anyway. Um, and for the 3060, I got it for 150, so I'll probably list it for 200, 220. And if it sells, great. If not, no worries. 
And if they do sell, then maybe I can condense everything into two rigs and maybe get back into that profitability range. So things are definitely getting hard out here, guys. And I'm trying to do everything I can to keep my farm running. And I want to basically give you all all this information so that you can try some of these things on your farm and perhaps prevent yourself from having to turn off your rigs. Because right now, if you can manage to not turn them off and even break even, as more and more people turn off their rigs, those yield numbers are going up and up and up. So right now is the great time that you want to be mining. This is where you're getting a ton of coins and you will see the benefit of that a year from now or two years from now. But if you turn off right now, then you're not gonna see that benefit. So we're really fighting to be the last person to turn off. The good news is that as more and more people do turn off, hopefully, profits kind of go up a little bit because profits will increase as yield increases. So the more people who turn off, then profits should technically come back a little bit. So if you can stick around that initial wave of miners turning off, then you are potentially able to stay profitable, even at 11 cents like what I'm at. But obviously this all depends on what the market does. If it crashes another 30%, including all the mineable coins, then you're gonna have to turn off and just wait it out basically.